It has been the dream of many people for the eventual colonization and settlement of space, some going as far as devising detailed plans for such endeavors. While beyond the capabilities of today's space programs and private space ventures, it is anticipated that space technology will evolve and advance to enable those dreams to someday become reality. Many of those plans entail the exploration and colonization of Earth's moon, Mars, and the other bodies in the solar system, and those scenarios are a well-known trope in science fiction. Beyond merely settling and living on the moon or other planets, some people even envision whole cities and industrial operations being developed as colonization expands further. There are even those who advocate living in space rather than on the surface of a moon or planet, building upon the concept of space stations. Space stations are both a major part of many science fiction stories and have been a major aspect of real life space exploration dating back to the earlier days of space exploration up to the present day. With the series of Soviet Salyut space stations during the 1970s and early 1980s, as well as the U.S. Skylab space station in 1973. These were followed by the Soviet, later Russian, Mir space station in 1986, which was operational until 1999, and culminating with the current International Space Station, which has been in orbit and operational since 1998. More recently, China's space program has embarked on the construction of the Tiangong space station. Additionally, there are now private space companies developing their own space station designs with plans for them being built and operational in the near future. Inspired by the promise of a future in space, during the mid-1970s, there were serious studies conducted on the possibility of space station concepts far larger and far more ambition than past, present, and future space station projects. The studies resulted in the designs for massive space habitats that would essentially be cities in space and would serve as space colonies inhabited by thousands of people. During the summer of 1975, NASA and Stanford University held a 10-week conference, later known as the Summer Study. During this conference, plans for space colonization were discussed in detail, leading to studies of possible habitat designs. The studies expanded on previous studies on space colonization by Princeton University professor Gerard K. O'Neill, who served as the technical director of the study. The studies were an extension of earlier feasibility studies conducted in 1969 by O'Neill and students at Princeton University. Aspects of a space colony that were explored in the study included the use of solar energy to sustain the closed ecosystem such a colony would require, along with space manufacturing. Materials to build the colony would be made from lunar material mined at a lunar colony and sent into space by a mass driver, which would be a sort of electromagnetic railway that would accelerate a payload to lunar escape velocity to be sent to the colony site. The colony would be located at the Earth-Moon L5 Lagrange point. The Earth-Moon L5 Lagrange point, a stable point trailing the moon, would keep the habitat in a relatively fixed position in the moon's orbit around the Earth. Lagrange points are points in space where the gravity between two bodies is balanced. The L5 Lagrange point was chosen due to the stability of a colony at that location, which would remain relatively in place, but slowly orbiting the exact point over the course of a month. This would allow for multiple colonies to be placed at that same point. Three designs were proposed and studied, the first one being referred to as a Bernal sphere. This was a design for a spherical space habitat initially proposed in 1929, John Desmond Bernal. Bernal's design was for a hollow, non-rotating spherical structure 10 miles in diameter, inhabited by 20,000 to 30,000 people. A variation of Bernal's original design was, was proposed by O'Neill. 
His proposed design was called Island One, a bernal sphere about 1,600 feet in diameter. The colony would rotate at just under two revolutions per minute to create centrifugal force to produce artificial Earth-like gravity at the sphere's equator. The interior landscape would be like that of a large valley running all the way around the equator of the sphere. Inhabitants' homes would be built around the inner surface of the sphere. Agriculture would be done in separate greenhouse-like modules. Sunlight would be directed by external mirrors to large windows near the poles of the sphere. The spherical shape was chosen for its ability to hold air pressure and mass efficiency at providing radiation shielding. O'Neill also proposed a larger design called Island 2, which would be slightly over a mile in diameter with a circumference at the equator of four miles. This version of the colony would be a habitat for 10,000 people, serving as the residential area of a space industrial facility. A variety of space-based industries were envisioned, including the production of materials for the construction of other space structures. Radiation shielding would be provided by an outer layer comprised of slag from industrial activities to protect the interior of the colony from cosmic radiation and solar flares. As with the Island One design, inhabitants' homes would be built around the inner surface of the sphere. Artificial gravity would be about 1g, or like that of Earth's at the equator, gradually lessening as one moved towards either pole. This would allow for some interesting possibilities for lower zero-gravity recreational activities such as zero-g sports and human-powered flight. Along the equator would be a small river with river banks comprised of soil imported from the moon. Distances inside the colony would be short enough that people would be able to walk or bicycle around the interior. Structures at either pole of the sphere would be for the docking of spacecraft as well as the location of the habitat's zero-g industrial activities. Large radiators to carry excess heat away into space would also be located at these locations. Closer to the sphere, greenhouse-like areas would be located for the habitat's agriculture to be carried out. Mirror arrays around the equator of the sphere would reflect sunlight to mirrors near each pole, which would in turn reflect sunlight into the interior of the sphere, giving the inhabitants natural sunlight. The mirrors would be adjusted to simulate a day and night cycle. At the time of the design studies, it was hoped that such a space colony would be built and inhabited by the early 1990s, with the anticipated infrastructure and industrial capabilities in place to allow for the construction of the colony. In addition to industry operating on a colony producing other spacecraft, satellites to be sent from lower Earth orbit, once the colony is fully operational, one major industrial process that can be carried out would be the production of materials for the building of new colonies. These later colonies would also be located at the L5 point, along with the original colony, further advancing the colonization of space. The goal would be to have permanently living in space, working and raising families as they would on Earth. It was hoped that by moving industry from Earth to space colonies, the environmental problems already affecting the world by the 1970s could be alleviated. Overall, while some involved with the study assumed the colony would be built and inhabited by the early years of the 21st century, as previously stated, this and other space colony concepts have turned out to be extremely ambitious and well beyond the capabilities of current space programs or private space ventures. However, this and other design concepts for space colonies are things that might have been that still have promise for the future once spaceflight capabilities and technology have advanced enough to allow such massive projects to be carried out. And in this case, science fiction would become reality and humanity would truly become a spacefaring civilization. The other two designs will be discussed in parts two and three. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe, and always remember when the future was cool.